who are coming together in the blessed union of nikah today as well as the families as well as all our families and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for those who are not married to be married to spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes and those who are married but do not have offspring may allah grant them offspring and those who are married and have offspring, may Allah make that offspring the coolness of their eyes. Those who are married and have some form of marital discord, may Allah make this a means of solution for their problems. Amin. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not my house, it is not your house. You cannot do as you please in the house of Allah. You do as Allah pleases. One of the sunnas of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that when a union of marriage and nikah is officiated, that officiation as per the sunnah should be done in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? The reason is it is a sacred bond. It is not a simple matter to get married. Yes, it is easy in Islam to get married. It has been simplified as in procedural matters. But in terms of seriousness of the relationship, it is something sacred. It is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept such that it is decreed even prior to you being born. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to understand. When you take someone's daughter in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have accepted her as your wife, you have accepted her in your nikah, in your marriage. It is not a simple matter. It comes about with a lot of responsibilities. It comes about with great sacrifice, bearing in mind that Allah is watching. Because you took her with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have something known as a khutbah. That is a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khutbah actually means a lecture. It means a talk, a reminder. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to always seize the opportunity of officiation of marriages to remind people about their duties, to remind them about their rights, to remind them about what marriage is all about and to encourage those who are not married to say, don't waste time. There are people who say, you know, I'm going out with someone for so many years and you know, the parents are saying that now we need to wait until this and until that. My beloved parents, to prevent haram, make halal easy. It is like a seesaw. The more difficult you make halal, the more easy you make haram. Remember that you will be answerable on the day of Qiyamah. Allah will catch you and ask you, why did you make it difficult for your daughter to get married? Why did you make it difficult for your son to get married? These children actually belong to Allah. This is why when someone passes away, what do we say? We say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Indeed, we all belong to Allah and all of us are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has given them to you as an amana, as a test. He has instructed you what he wants you to do with these children, not according to your own whims and desires. You do not decide what should happen with your children unless that decision is within the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you make life difficult for them, Allah will catch you. If you make life difficult for them, Allah will hold you responsible. So therefore, my first point of encouragement, أُوسِيكُمْ وَنَفْسِي بِتَقْوَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ I advise myself and yourselves to be conscious of Allah, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the day Allah is going to ask you about whatever he has given you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that as, as human beings, we all love to see things our way, but we need to understand things need to happen the way Allah has decreed. That is the reason why he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, we need to make it easier to get married. But at the same time, when we get married, we must understand it is not a perpetual honeymoon. It is a big sacrifice. It is a very great sacrifice. Your life will change. Inshallah, you will be blessed with offspring. When your offspring come into the entire equation, your life will change forever in a different way. 
people think, okay, I'm going to enjoy, etc. I will have fun, I will this. MashaAllah, Allah might give you moments of joy, definitely. But the moments of sacrifice are greater. Your life changes, my beloved brothers and sisters. If you are not prepared to change your life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sake of that marriage working, how do you expect it to work? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was towards the last few days of his blessed life, he reminded us to be kind to women. And he sat up one day and he said, I advise you good regarding women. And I implore you to be kind towards the women. So much so that there is one narration where the Prophet wasallam speaks of the creation of a female. And he says, that a woman was actually created from the rib of Adam alayhi salam. Now I do know that today there are a few modernists who deny that. And they say women are not created from the rib. I don't know if you've heard that, but if you see the internet, it's filled with all sorts of these type of words. The reality is they say it's an insult. How can you say we were created from a rib? My brothers, my sisters, what you were created from has nothing to do with you. Who you are right now has everything to do with you. Because if you say it is an insult to be created from a rib, someone else might say it is a bigger insult to be created from dust and from the soil. And there is no denial we were created from dust and from the soil. It's got nothing to do with what you were made from. Even if you were made from gold and silver, it would not have increased your value if you were a bad person today. But even if you were created from dust, your value is dependent on your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. My brothers, my sisters, following that advice to Muhammad, from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to tell you, normally in the khutbatul haja that is read just before the nikah, and we will hear those verses, every verse has in it, ittaqullaha. Ya ayyuha nasu ittaqu rabbakum. O people, be conscious of your Rabb. And at the end of that verse, Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ be conscious of Allah, whose name you use when you want to make one another believe your story. Isn't we use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We say, Wallahi, Wallahi, every little while, right? You want someone to believe you, you use the name of Allah. Allah says, be careful, don't just use that name just like that. Make sure you know what you are saying. That's the name of Allah. Be conscious of Allah, whose name you use who, to ask one another things. And be conscious of Al-Arham. Al-Arham in the language actually means the wombs. And here what is meant is the women folk who are connected to you and the relationships that have come to you via the womb. So you are related to people, they are your siblings, they are somehow connected to you because Allah chose that they be connected to you. It was not your decision. I did not choose my brothers and my sisters and my uncles and my aunts. That happened. So Allah says, be careful. But the point I'm raising is the word taqwa. The consciousness of Allah or the love of Allah so much that we create a barrier between us and the punishment of Allah, the displeasure of Allah. We create a barrier by fulfilling Allah's commands. The next verse, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena Notice the first one was, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people. The second one is, O oh, you who believe. It's becoming more specialized. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way. Be conscious of him in the proper way. The third verse also has the consciousness of Allah. Why? This is nikah. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, be conscious of Allah in your relationships. Don't involve in haram. And if you have involved in haram, remember Allah has the door of tawbah and repentance open. Change your life before you breathe your last. We never know when we are going to breathe our last. Change your life. It is not difficult. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Have the attitude of a mu'min. Today, the ummah is suffering and we are struggling and we all think the problem is someone else. We don't realize I am the problem. I need to change my life. I need to become closer to Allah. Every one of us has sometimes a little sin that we are perpetrating, minor or major, depending on what it is. Change it. 
Become a person who's closer to Allah. Stop it. Wallahi, it will help you. It will help the generations that are to follow after you. Be conscious of Allah. This is why Allah speaks about marriage and nikah. And Allah says, marry, but don't engage in that which is prohibited. It will earn the wrath of Allah. You affect society. You affect the community. You affect the ummah at large. So this third verse, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا O you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utter that which is sadeed, that which is upright, that which is straight. Watch your tongue, in other words. Watch your tongue. When we get married, a lot of us, you know, we are men seated here. I'm sure the women are also listening to what we have to say. A lot of us do not think that we are abusive with our tongues, yet we are dirty, filthy, we swear, we lie, we cheat, we hurt people's feelings. And the verse was read at the point of nikah, qulu qawlan sadidan. It's an instruction from Allah. Say that which is straight only. Don't utter windy words, dirty words, hurtful words, swear words, lies, falsehood, deception. Don't say those words. Many people, they divorce their wives in a discussion. Suddenly, talaq, 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 and they think, now let's go to the Maulana and try and sort our problem out. How? My brother, you were warned the day you got married to watch your tongue, and you did not watch your tongue. Now that you've shot all three shots from your gun straight into the chest of someone, you are trying to resuscitate them, and you don't realize what you've done is a heinous crime. It shouldn't even be done to the dogs. May Allah forgive us. And this is the condition of the ummah. This is what is happening today. Learn what divorce is all about before you get married. So that you do not do something wrong before you own a gun. And I'm not encouraging you to own guns, but it's just an example. Before you own a gun, you need to know what the trigger is all about. You cannot have a gun and suddenly you're playing with the trigger. And when you shoot yourself in the head, you go to someone and say, what happened? It's too late. You need to know what it's all about. So be careful of your tongue, my brothers, my sisters. That hadith, the Prophet ﷺ speaks of a woman being created from a rib. And he says, you know that the rib is bent. If you, the end of the hadith says, in the habta tuqimuhu kasartahu. If you try and straighten a rib, what happens to it? It will crack, it will break. And if you want to benefit from the rib, you benefit from it while it is not straight, while it is slightly crooked. Now, one might say, okay, is this an insult? Wallahi, it's not an insult. I think the meaning of it is more important. What is the meaning? The meaning is you will never be able to change someone completely to your liking. They will be 50%, 60%. If you have 60, you are fortunate in today's world. Our parents, they had about 80, 90. I think it's dropping as time passes. But you are still very, very lucky, mashallah. Very fortunate. Wallahi, if you have 60%, I consider it a marriage made in heaven. Subhanallah. Before I used to say 80, 90, mashallah. There are still some, alhamdulillah. But... I have to give you the same warning of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you want your wife to be like a pin regarding everything the way you want it, it's cracked, it's broken, the marriage will not last. There will be turbulence, your children will suffer, the relatives suffer, the relationships break because you were too hard. Many men, they think they are, you know, big hulks and they want to prove a point, I'll fix you up. So the mother lives around the corner, you're not allowed to go there. That's it. Why? Because I said so. I'm the boss. The Prophet said, if there was a sajda besides Allah, it would be for me. You're lucky. I'm not telling you to do that. My brother, be careful how you talk. Watch your tongue. That same khutbah of nikah warned you about your tongue. How can you talk to someone's daughter like this? How can you talk to a human being like this? How can you talk to a worshiper of Allah like this? Do you not fear Allah? Why do you want to be so hard when there's no reason for you to be hard? No reason at all. Just your mazaj. You know what is mazaj? That means just your own fancies, your own will. That's it. I want to fix her. I want to show her who's the boss. I'd rather the whole world think I'm a chicken and I have a happy marriage than everybody thinks I'm a big boss and I'm struggling at home. Common logic. So my brothers and sisters, we are living in an era where people are picking on Islam because they are saying the Muslims are maltreating their women. The problem is us, it's not Islam. 
Islam has the solution. But the way we treat our women sometimes is really unacceptable from the perspective of Islam. Be careful, watch your tongue, allow them. That's the mother, that's the father, that's the relatives. You cannot simply divorce your wife from her family the minute you married her. No, you need to understand, yes, there is a relationship that needs to be there. If it is getting beyond the limits, you may want to discuss it and you may want to communicate because communication is something that is essential for the working of that marriage without communication it won't work talk speak that's your spouse that's the mother of your children inshallah that is your life partner speak to them discuss things there should not be a cat and mouse relationship in the house not at all may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us may he forgive us may he give us goodness wallahi my brothers and sisters we are suffering I want to let you know there are ulama in our midst we all receive so many complaints from so many sisters every single day about how they are maltreated, about how they are abused, about how their husbands are having affairs left, right and center, about what's going on, about the tongue, about how they don't want them to visit their own mothers and fathers. Even upon the death of one father, the husband on one occasion said, I'm sorry, you're not going home. And then they add salt to the injury by saying, if you go, you are divorced. What's going on? That's my father. That's the, if you had a little problem with him, it doesn't mean I had. Resolve the matter. To resolve the matter is an act of worship and ibadah. Subhanallah. My brothers, my sisters, I want to cry when I talk about marriages. Because today, when people get married, na'udhu billah, I'm sorry to tell you that we wonder how long it's going to work. That's how bad it's become. People say, oh, they're not yet divorced. Have you heard that? Y-E-T. They're not yet divorced. Astaghfirullah. Which means if you last longer than a few years, it's kamal. <laughs> Meaning it's considered, wow, mashallah, these people, 10 years, they're still married. Oh, alhamdulillah. Why is that the case in the Muslim ummah? Change it. Respect one another. Become responsible. Cut your sins. How many men and women are hooked onto pornography? We have to talk about it. It's haram for us to abstain from advising the ummah. We have to say that's a problem. Cut it out. People you would never believe. Sometimes you have a mashallah, sunnah, beard, etc. But the person swears and beats up his spouse and his children and is hooked onto pornography and out doing things that are haram. You would never believe if you see him because he is in the masjid every time for the prayer. Something is wrong with his salah. My brothers, my sisters, the ummah is bleeding. Do you want to help the ummah? In that case, change your life. Change your life. Today is the day. If I'm seated here, it's not my will that I'm seated here. Yes, we may have made the effort, but it was Allah's planning. If you are seated here listening to me, I probably don't know you that well. I don't know your situation. What I'm saying, Allah put it in my heart to say it. Because wallahi, we are bleeding, we are facing a challenge. We are so happy to see the nikah. In these words that I'm uttering, there is advice for the spouse. There is advice for those who are coming together today and for all of us. My brothers, my sisters, understand the relationship. And I want to end this talk by saying the advice is also for the sisters. You know, the brothers must be sitting thinking this man is bashing us. Wallahi, that's not true. We have a problem. We have a crisis. Learn to respect one another, love one another. Loving words, kind words, beautiful words. It is an ibadah to choose your words correctly because Allah gave you a brain before he gave you the mouth. Remember that. It is an ibadah. What is the difference between us and the animals? The brain, subhanallah. So remember this, my beloved brothers and sisters. My dear sisters, it's very important to fulfill the rights of your spouses as well. Your husbands, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. Very important to take care of their needs, to understand the type of person he is, to look after the way you speak to him, the way you address the issues that you have within your home my beloved sister take it easy be respectful as well fulfill the rights it is important many people become every small problem they have they say i want out that's it i want out you know i give you an example many years ago when we used to have motor vehicles if the car has a damage you don't throw the car away you repair the car but today we have a new idea. The car has a small damage, change it. Why? Insurance. By the way, there is a whole topic about it being halal or haram. I don't want to get into it. But to be honest, we need to not apply that rule in our marriages. Something went wrong. 
I want to tell you as a counselor for the last 17 years, those marriages where they have patched up after a problem are stronger than those who have not had problems. Did you hear what I just said? I'm talking of my own experience with the people that I have assisted over the years. Those marriages who have forgiven and patched up after having had problems are far stronger in relationship than those who have never had a problem. And I tell you, it's a gift of Allah. When you are ready to mend for the sake of Allah, for the sake of everything, for the sake of the whole ummah, in that case, Allah will give you a gift. But the rule, the rule is both parties need to change for the sake of Allah, not one. Both need to change for the sake of Allah. You know, I can go on and on speaking, but these are a few words, mashallah, of advice. And they have come from my heart. They were not prepared. I did not prepare what to say. I came, I sat here, and I decided to let whatever came in my heart be uttered for the sake of Allah. We enjoyed a beautiful recital of uh, our Qari who is here, mashallah. I really was hoping who could have carried on longer. Not only was the recitation correct, but even the meanings of the words were very, very touching and powerful. The entire Quran is so, but the verses he selected were apt, mashallah. Similarly, I would be failing in my duty. If I did not make mention of my beloved uncle who passed away, uh, Maulana Waliullah Kepi, I'm sure we all know him, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Uh, we were very close to him. I've obviously, he is my uncle, and these are my cousins and my nephews who are here. And I'm so happy to be here today. I'm sure if he was here, he would have indeed been so happy. But we make dua for him. May Allah give him maghfirah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grant him Jannatul Firdaus. And similarly, all the other marhumin of the Ummah, may Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, let's not delay the nikah and let's not make it difficult for our children. You who are parents here, make it easy for your children. Help them. It doesn't mean you shouldn't help them. Assist them. Make it easy for them. And don't treat those who come into your home as a daughter in law or a son in law in a bad way. Treat them with the most respect because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The best from amongst you. Imagine Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking. He says the best from amongst you is he who is best to his spouse and ahl includes the entire family, your family members. When you are the best to your family members in the eyes of Allah, you are the best person. But if the whole world thinks you are a nice person, and your family thinks you are a rotten person. In that case, your family's witness comes first and what the people think comes afterwards because they don't know you, they don't live with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.